people. Listen, today we are talking about all of the questions you have asked on this channel since I began. I have been keeping a tally of them and I'm going to chip away at them during office hours. And I think I'm going to start doing this on a weekly basis because while I put out weekly content about how to deal with gaslighting at work, it's based on a specific topic and I do an eight to 10 minute video on it, but there's something awesome about using this platform to answer your questions specifically. So what I'm hoping you can do is as things come to you, as questions come to you, I want you to drop them in the chat or drop them in a comment on my videos. I read every single comment. If some of you some of you already know this because I get back to you really fast. It means the world to me that you're engaging with my content. So please interact with me. Let me know what you think. And if this is something you're into, join me here again next week because we're just going to do this. This is just what we're going to do. So let's start off here. Quick background. If you're like, what is, what is she talking about gaslighting at work? Listen, gaslighting is when someone tries to talk you out of how you see reality, right? They try to talk you out of your experience of reality. They wanna tell you how to feel, what to think, and what to do and how to do it. And it's dangerous because, listen, if we can't trust our own version of reality, it's very, very hard to find our footing in this lifetime, certainly at work. And gaslighting at work is fascinating because it can take so many different forms. It can take the form of someone trying to gaslight you into doing something that really isn't part of your role, right? And you're like, wait a minute, you hired me to do A, but now I'm doing B. I don't have time to do both A and B. I was only hired to do A. And they gaslight you by saying, oh, no, 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 no. What are you, not a team player? You got to do what it takes, right? These are subtle forms of gaslighting. And they can become, they can start out kind of innocent and minor. And listen, all of us have gaslighted others at one point or another. So there can, you know, I don't want anybody clutching their pearls thinking that gaslighters are bad people. We all do it from time to time, but we want to keep it in check and we don't want to let it become a habit because it has very real consequences for our self self esteem, for our work performance, for our relationships. So this channel is all about how do we recognize gaslighting? How do we deal with gaslighting? And how do we return to a place where we can speak honestly and communicate directly about the things that are hard? Because that's really, gaslighters gaslight because there's a hard thing that needs to be talked about and they don't know how to talk about it or they don't want to talk about it. So let's, let's start with the questions, shall we? Okay, here's a great question. I absolutely love this question. Here it is. Do you recommend telling the gaslighter that they're gaslighting? And specifically, do I recommend identifying the behavior of gaslighting to a narcissist gaslighter? This is so important because a lot of times we conflate gaslighters with narcissists. There is an overlapping Venn diagram where certainly a narcissist is also a gaslighter. But gaslighters are not necessarily always narcissists. What do I mean by that? Look, some gaslighters do it because they've never learned how to communicate appropriately. They don't know how to just have a hard conversation. They don't know how to get their needs met. All they know is manipulation through gaslighting, right? I'm going to tilt my camera a little bit there. That's a little bit more at my eye level. All they know is manipulation through control, through getting you to second guess yourself. It's not that they're narcissists. It's that they don't have the tools. So to answer your question, should you tell a gaslighter they are gaslighting you? It really depends on which kind you're dealing with. If you're dealing with someone who just has some really bad habits, you may want to say, hey, look, it sounds like you really feel strongly about A, but I also feel strongly about B. And I'd like to talk that through and acknowledge that we may need to agree to disagree, right? That's you kind of coaching someone. Look, there's another way around this. And if that someone still keeps gaslighting, you can always say like, whoa, 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 time out. I'm feeling a little bit gaslit right now. And you may have to educate them on what that even is, 
right? So I want you to think about that. If it's a narcissist, on the other hand, if who you are dealing with is a narcissist, a narcissist is someone with very little, sometimes no empathy whatsoever. They don't care about you. They're using you. That's all you are, is you're, you're being used. If you say, hey, narcissist, you're gaslighting me, psh, goes right over their head. Doesn't mean anything to them. It just doesn't even mean anything to them. In fact, it may just agitate them and make things worse. So the answer is, should you call out gaslighting? I think if you're dealing with someone who's not necessarily a narcissist, they're just a bad communicator with bad habits, I would push back on them, create space where you can debate and have room to disagree with each other. If that doesn't work, say, you know what? I'm feeling a little gaslit right now. You're trying to talk me out of a position that I'm in and I'm, I'm not okay with that. What I am okay with is debating and creating space for opposing views. I'm not okay with you gaslighting, right? I think that is appropriate to do. But if you're dealing with a narcissist, you're going to know because the narcissist is going to just explode and it'll just escalate things. It'll be a messy nightmare, right? So it's a little bit of a nuanced thing there. So I hope that helps. That's the first one. And let me know if you need more content on identifying just a bad communicator with a narcissist, because I think it's a really, really valid question. Okay. That's the first question. Second question that I wanted to address is this one. This is in the context of someone who's a shouter at work. You ever work with one of those people? They're just shouty, shouty two by four, can't get through the kitchen door. All they do is bark right? Something doesn't go their way, they yell. And the question is, what if, so one of the techniques I teach is a timeout. When things are getting hot and you don't like the way things are going and the escalate, tension is escalating, escalating, shouting is happening. I like calling it timeout. Whoa, 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 timeout, timeout. We're all having our reactions to this. Let's just take a break for a minute and regroup, right? Calling it timeout helps to diffuse the tension. And the question is, what if the person who's the shouter ignores the timeout and just keeps shouting over everyone. Here's what I would say to that. So much of this depends on how much power you have in the room, in the relationship. If you're the lowest person on the totem pole, let's say you're the intern and the shouter is the CEO. Listen, you don't have a lot of power in that situation. Even if you call a timeout, even if you say, I don't like this and leave the room, Look, there's consequences to that. When you have less power, it's less effective to call it, get involved, shout back or whatever, all the options, all the communication options you have. If you're low on the totem pole, those aren't going to really work for you. What you may have to do in that situation is go into a place that allows you to be present while filtering out the shouting and the screaming. So what do I mean by that? Back in the day at Apple, when Steve Jobs was at the helm, one of the most brilliant CEOs of all time, bar none, also a shouter, also kind of a gaslighter, tough guy to work for. But listen, he was brilliant. And the way a lot of the people that were able to stay at Apple for so many years, the way they were able to hang in there is they had a mental filter, they called it. And they would filter out what Steve Jobs would say and catch all of the nasty personal attacks, ad hominem attacks, shouting. They would filter that out so that the only thing they would let into their consciousness was that which was useful. Because quite often when he would shout and holler and carry on, there was actually a grain of truth in it somewhere if you could get past the shouting. So if you're low on the totem pole, if you're low in the hierarchy, right? It can be very effective to go inside of yourself and say to yourself, I don't have to take this personally. This isn't about me necessarily. I can listen through a filter, right? No one can make you feel small and scared unless you let them make you feel small and scared. Now, I mean that when it's like business shouting and you're at work. I, if you're in a dark alley and somebody's got a gun, they can make you feel small and scared. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about difficult conversations, moments of small and scared, right? So if you have less power, listening through a filter, installing that, it's almost like if you think about it, it's like um, having a buffer. 
between you and the shouter, right? But as you rise up in the hierarchy, as you have more power, let's say maybe you're not the CEO, but you're a senior vice president, or you're a very well-respected director, you can call a timeout sometimes. It really depends on the power dynamics. If there, if you have a good relationship with that CEO, or if you have a good relationship with the leader ta- leadership team, you can sometimes call it, hey, t- you know what, timeout. Listen, this is a really tough issue. We all have really strong feelings about it. I do find that meetings are more effective when we're calm. So let's all take a five minute break and then come back and regroup. A lot of times the shouter is so grateful for someone calling it, right? Just saying, oh, thank you. I need to calm down. But sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're like, I'm just getting warmed up. And because you work for me, you're going to take it, right? So what do you do if they keep shouting and you've called a timeout? This is a really tough one. This is a really, really tough one. You may have to go to that filter situation, that filter strategy, But after the fact, once you're out of the meeting and they've worn themselves out and shouted themselves out, you have a couple of options. One option is to give that person feedback when they're calm. And what's the golden rule of feedback? Before you give feedback, you ask them if they're interested in feedback. You get permission to proceed. Never give someone feedback that doesn't want it and hasn't asked for it. Never. Even if they should get it, right? So for example, let's say I go to the CEO who's been shouting and say, hey, now that he's he or she has calmed down, now that they are calmed down, hey, would you be open to feedback? If they're like, no, I'm not open to your feedback, don't give it to them. But also beware, someone who is not open to feedback is a poor leader, You know who else was not open to feedback? The leadership team of Blockbuster. Remember Blockbuster video back in the day? People that are not open to feedback get sideswiped by innovation, get sideswiped by the next generation of inventors, right? Netflix came in and crushed Blockbuster. This is what I mean by pay attention. If you're working with a leader who shouts and doesn't stop, who won't take feedback, What you are dealing with is a toxic work environment, dare I say culture. And if that's the case, you got to really ask yourself, is it worth being here? Is excellence possible for me here? The answer may be yes, in which case you got to figure out how to work around it. But a lot of times the answer is no. Be very careful. Do not get adjusted and acclimated to an environment that makes it impossible for you to be excellent. Really be careful of that. Okay, my people, I'm going to pause right now because I think what we're going to do is keep these office hours to around the 10 minute mark. And if we need more time, we can have more time, but I have so many questions and I'd love to spread them out over the next coming weeks. If there is any questions you have, any issues, any um, like, let's see, live chat, anything you want me to know, please let me know. And please know how grateful I am that you're here. Please know that I read every message you send me and please join me next time. And as always shine on my friend. we need your light. You take care. Oh my God, congrats. Thank you, DS. Oops, D-S-O-K-U-S. Woo! I so appreciate your support. I recognize your name because you've given me comments in the past and it means the world to me. Honestly, I just want you to know that. The encouragement means the world. Thank you. Big hugs. Okay, now I'm really leaving now. (laughs) 